following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys had a good weekend. It was uh, kind of a letdown around here as far as snow goes in the eastern part of North Carolina. Um, you know, we were hoping for at least six inches. Nothing as lofty as uh as the aspirations that uh most of the folks up north had they got more than they what they bargained for obviously but uh we'll see how that you know affects maybe some economic numbers down the line but uh not really going to probably be a big deal so uh again the market looks forward and incorporates all that in and uh takes into consideration things like that so uh we're going to take a look at the s and p's immediately let me see where we're going here okay uh we're going to take it, uh, a look at the S&Ps immediately, and what I want to do is is kind of pull up our scanner first, go to our futures section, and take a look at uh, S&P minis across the board here. So, again, uh, new profile attempt to appear that's, that's already based in. We want to go ahead and show this on our charts. There's our daily. There's the, uh, you know, simple fact, new profile locked in, that orange bar kind of hints of it on friday and there we go the weekly uh actually have a situation here where we've got a new profile attempt to appear on the weekly too so we've got some new inflection points more than likely coming up uh start of next or start of next week so there's the situation on the weekly there's that big 1953 number still remember closed below went back and almost retested it so the big numbers all things considered today are going to be now 1918 up top you've still got that 1909 from before so you got a pretty serious resistance area up in that particular range you've got now new daily support around 1846 taking a look at our 240 shorter term numbers 1904 that coincides with that and let me just pull this up that coincides with that 1909 so 1904 1909 then you got 1918 you got some decent resistance up there and in my opinion Going back to our scanner, and again, going back to our dashboard, looking at our breath. Again, you know, we haven't had the market open yet. This is where our breath numbers closed on Friday. And remember, uh, we had some new boxes attempting to appear on Friday. That's going to convert some of these numbers over. And, you know, my big numbers is this weekly. We're not anywhere near trying to convert over in the weekly. So, again, you know, we're, we pretty much have a stable situation as far as being able to sell resistance, in my opinion, still on any types of rallies up into that 1909, 1918 area, those are kind of the big numbers. I wouldn't if you're if you're considering going long. You know, you've got some short-term things in your favor as far as short-term breath. And I want to show you, by the way, if we look at our short-term breath, we're just going to look at our crossovers and extensions. Really, uh, we crossed over on the 20th. Uh, that's that's the bottom of the S and P rally right there. That's that there's that overextension. Uh, Tucker uses him if he's watching this show today. I think he is. Uh, some of those you know big disparities when the breath gets really really negative. Um, as far as the ratio goes, that was actually 89 percent when the market made a bottom there. Um, he was talking. I think he was looking at 75 percent and above was uh, a pretty pretty overextended mode but again when you get the crossover after those extensions then you know that the market really on a short-term basis has turned in my opinion i did uh nine videos this weekend uh we've got a new scanner site that's up um i'll give you the links to all that uh hopefully that'll clear up some of the uh i forgot another guy called about that out of texas about trading nadex so I've, I've done a lot of these kind of how-to videos how to ring the register type videos not just what happens when you press the red button or the green button um and uh the scanner is pretty final and some of these 
thoughts and some of these processes that are in there hopefully will uh, will clean things up. So uh, what do you do now? So as we go back to the S&Ps, I want to pull up our kind of snapshot charts in the scanner, which just gives you a really good visual, gives you all the inflection points. Um, what do you do now? In my opinion, you've just got to sit tight and wait for some rallies up into those areas up top and then be able to sell them. I'm not a big fan of, of really kind of picking battles when we're in the balanced areas and nothing to really lean on. So this is kind of a wait and see right now. You know, what, what can we trade actively? I want to go into the bonds here and the notes. I want to look at the 10-year. We're up about three ticks this morning. Um, a new profile on the 10-year also. I'm going to show it to you on our e-signal charts. Again, you got, you know, if we could get any type of market pullback in the S&Ps, get any types of rallies up into 128, 25, 26, that's going to be something where you can just whack the, the notes head off again. Um, we caught a really good situation off of our weeklies around the 128, 27, being able to kind of short that again as we came back down below. Um 128, 25, 26 going to be because it's going to be resistance on the 10 year right now. Don't know where the S the S and P's if you know if the S and P's kind of churn around in these balanced areas, the bonds may just kind of start relaxing a little bit and may not rally up into that area. But you know that's that's kind of a wait and see. Also, we had a pretty big move Thursday and Friday in the notes, bonds, and in the U S stock market. So you know going to have to kind of let it let itself figure out whether it wants to consolidate and move higher on the U.S. stock market or was that a uh, kind of a bear market rally and, and uh, that's all she wrote. So I think this is a morning where we just ha have to wait and see. Gold really kind of astounding to me that it's, that it's pressing up against the 1104 area again. Here we go. And I'm looking at the den here. Yeah, Panthers did pull it off. Looked pretty good. Gold coming up in. I, I really don't like the way this is crowding this 1104 now. Uh, I'm not as bearish as I was. This this is our weekly, and as you see these higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and this consolidate consolidation here, this is the type of situation where ultimately they usually pop. So um, right now I'm not as bearish as I was on gold. Um, and that consolidation, te classical technical analysis type consolidation, that little flag looking long term situation there is concerning to me now. Um, so gold is, uh, I'm not exactly wanting to short off this 1104 right now. Um, let's take a look at. Silver, really quick. Monday morning, I get hit by everybody here. If Tom, you're saying it's astounding, I'm not. Uh, I'm not wanting to short gold right now. I'm converting over. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now, now. now. toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi guys, welcome back to the show and uh, we're looking at crude oil right now and this is our snap charts in the scanner. I'm going to cry. I'm so happy to see these things on a daily basis now. What else do you need? Um, as we look at this new profile that's that's happened, uh, we had that you know hint of a new profile on uh, Friday, and then obviously we locked in. This is our daily situation. Unfair high is 32.72. We talked about you know this is in a bear market. Uh, don't get super mega. You know, happy about crude oil reversing. All we're doing, remember, we were looking for a little bit of a pop. We had some indications of that. We had our four hour really start breaking stride for the first time in a long time. I'm looking at my charts again right now, getting above that 2949 and, and consolidating above. And then, uh, but we hit, we always talk about, you know, long term takes precedence over intermediate, over short term. And again, you know, we, we had an inflection point, just like kind of like the S&P thing we were just talking about. We've, We've technically been challenged. The shorts kind of took over. We rallied back up a little bit into some resistance after that technical breakdown. And it's very similar to crude oil. I mean, we'd really, I don't show prices in these charts because then the exchanges would um, force me into bankruptcy. <laughs> so we're not, we're not given actual prices on the charts here, but let me, let me go into uh, e signal really so we can get a, Get a price high 32.74 today, and that unfair high is at 32.73. So hit it to the tick, probably round it off. Um, and remember, you know, crude oil is, is, you know, there's not a lot of people scrambling to get uh, crude oil prices higher right now. So this is kind of where we're at. And what do you do with it now? That's the big question. Um, I, again, we're kind of sitting around in, in no man's land. We've got a POC we're at right now, but uh, again, you know, we could re easily revisit the entire fair auction down to 2871. So again, um, stops on the short side, more than likely above 3273, 3274, and uh, targets on the downside initially. Where are they at? 3042. Why? Because I'm going to go back to my charts here. And that's that 3042 sitting right there. So you got some short-term support, but that's a little bit of a target-rich environment down there, in my opinion, on the short side. Uh, let's see. We're talking about temperatures in the den. 
I think it was 23 here this morning, but it's supposed to go up to 50. Complete letdown, no snow outside. I know you guys in D.C. and New York are uh, not feeling the same way as I am about snow. In the mountains, you know, North Carolina is a cool state. I mean, you've got, just like Virginia, Jay, you've got that killer coastal region, not very populated, actually. A lot of people are moving down from, from the north and uh, entering towns like Bath, Blackbeard's Haven. If you don't know a lot about that, look into it. It's kind of cool. Um, Ocracoke Island, if you got, I mean, there's some really cool spots in this state. But uh, around that sound area, Bellhaven, Pamlico, very cool part of this state. And not a lot of people around. You can go down there and get on the water, get you a house, and not see anybody in both directions forever. It's, it's quite unbelievable, actually. But then you go to the mountains, and I'm getting paid by the state of North Carolina right now. Go to the mountains, and literally you got zero temperatures and snow all over the place. So it's kind of a cool scene. Beaufort, yes, realist. Killer, killer spot. But uh, I kind of like this. Out, you, if you go past Beaufort into Cedar Island and go up there, it's kind of – they even talk a different uh, accent. They call them high titers down there. Um, so they uh, still have that kind of weird British, Scottish kind of slant to everything. It's uh, interesting. I used to ride my bicycle over on the ferry to get to Ocracoke Island from uh, Swan Quarter when I was young and uh, carry a, a glad bag, go over there and fish all day with somebody else's rod, come back with a bunch of fish and on the ferry, ride my bicycle and head home. It was kind of cool. Don't have any film of that, but it, it was cool. Trust me. Uh, we're going to take a look at <clears throat> uh, something on the Forex side that, that finally, finally came true here. And we're going to talk about the U.S. dollar, too. So the euro, here we go. Uh, we're going to wait for our chart to pop up here on our euro. Why, is, why can I not? What's going on here? Here we go. All right. So looking at the euro, we talk religiously about this 109 area. We finally broke below it, dollar rallied a little bit. That is, again, where I'm placing stops above, and I have no confidence whatsoever that this particular um, – currency relative to the u.s dollar is going to do anything except go down here's our four hour here's our one hour um, again i'm not looking at this as a short-term play i'm just looking at this as put the stops in find some targets to take half off and just let this thing fall apart and i'm still taking that attitude on the euro let's take a look at the dollar really quick let's go to our e-signal charts and let's go up to <clears throat> where are we at the March contract on the dollar index, and now, in my opinion, here's our daily on the dollar. No new profiles tempting to appear. And by the way, now we've crossed that border and closed above on a weekly that we talked about was really, really important to kind of get on the other side of the mountain. And let's let's look at that now as support at 99.37. And uh, I, again, I think this thing can really lurch, lurch forward to get to 170. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at the den. Charleston, 38. That's quite low. And we do weather on this show, too. Let's see. Harkers, Harkers Island. Yeah, man, it, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's kind of a secret. I mean, the eastern part of the state doesn't get a lot of fanfare, but, man, it's, it's, it's a cool spot. Check it out sometime. Okay. All right. I, I want to take a look at uh, I want to take a look at the XLF. This is kind of interesting. You know, I think you know the notes and bonds. I mean, you know, these financials have kind of been let down. Um, you got some resistance now at twenty one ninety three twenty two. We talked about that. Uh, I'm not as bullish on the financial sector or any of those financial stocks as I was. Uh, when we were looking at the yield curve widening and, and things of that nature, I still think bonds and notes are going to probably sell off here. Um, I, you know, I think it's just a natural progression of, of kind of what's ahead of us on those scenes. And I think we're probably going to be doing some fixes overseas, innovative things in China to uh, rig their market, just like we rigged our own market. And remember, we rigged our own treasury market to help the stock market. 
all right, in a sense. So they're going to rig their stock market to help their stock market. I mean, this is a kind of a global game that we've enabled. So remember that and remember that uh, some of these notes and bonds may end up selling off now and that widening yield curve could be relatively attractive to XLF, but not yet. We're going to have to have a weekly close above 21.93 to really enable me to even think about that. So, again, this is kind of a no trade. I had a bunch of questions about the financials and emails over the weekend. All right. So when we come back from break, we're going to take a look at some stock plays out of the scanner. And uh, there's been some great ones that have been picked out in that particular relative strength versus a weak market. And we're going to look at some of those again. Be right back. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Looking at the scanner right now, looking at our ETF profile heat grid, just ranking them on our dailies. And these these utilities, man, I mean, have they just stayed strong in the midst of the pullback and actually in the rally back? So I want to take a look at these. Um, you know, uh, market may have had its little customary dead cap bounce here. And again, we've got some headwinds that 1909 to 1918 general area we talked about for you long-term guys. That's kind of going to be 
you know, area of resistance. But uh, look at these utilities, man. I mean, these have been really just completely on fire. I'm just going to pick out a couple here. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of these ones you could hide in. Um, this one in particular, what I'm looking at is, I, you know, I noticed top weekly here. This one's been a little bit difficult to get out of its own way. So looking at FE, and I'm going to put our candlestick on this. Um, this has been something I've been paying attention to. Obviously, the last couple of weeks has rallied back, rallied up. But remember, we've been in a downtrend with this particular stock. Just got our head right in that, you know, top area. We've, we've you know, basically stayed in the balanced area, haven't broken out. Um, that's one to keep your eye on. Maybe a little bit of a short play here. Not a long-term play, but a little bit of a short-term short play on FE. Uh, CMS Energy Corp, taking a look at this one. Uh, a lot of these have just really shown strength. And, and if you'll notice, uh, have, you know, have actually stayed within or above daily profiles. Um, take a look at uh, um, Nextera. Let's see if we can get the charts up here. Again, these have been nice, you know, buy support, kind of hide in utilities kind of plays. But, you know, I, I'm not so sure, even though our breaths are just incredibly positive across the board here, I'm not so sure that this sector is going to continue to hang in there. So what I want to do is go back to my ETF sector. You know, I've been really partial to, to trying to find anomalies in the scanner. Uh, and our one hour, you got XLE in the seller here, actually, as of Friday. So let's let's just take a look at this, and let's let's take a look at some of the stocks that we were kind of pounding the desk about, namely this Cabot Oil and Gas Company. I want to just kind of let you know where the level of the market is relative to some of those. Uh, and here we are. Uh, these things just completely, you know, blew a gasket on the upside here. And pre-market, let me just see if we've got some pre-market prices here. Uh, COG. You know, you always want to try to get the best bang for your buck in the shortest amount of time. That's why people fall in love with shorting things because they usually fall faster in a shorter amount of time, and you can scoop up a, a lot of points a lot quicker than just kind of waiting back and being a long-term investor. But that can be a very dangerous game. Ask anybody who's uh, been doing this for a while. Um, COG, this is one we you know, we really talked about that was showing its hand early, and then we started getting above 1737. We got a nice little bounce here, but what do you do with it now? Um, Pre-market, let me see if we've got any prints here. Nothing yet. Uh, you know, these are ones where now, you know, in my opinion, the market might pull back a little bit. You've got some support um, around that 1734, 1737. Remember, these things can pull back. And they can, you know, do that breakout, come back, come back and retest. So be aware of these types of moves. Um, this may be it for these particular stocks right now. Crude oil may consolidate and churn around here for a little bit. If these stocks put in a new, these types of stocks, and I'm, I'm, I'm placing SWN in that same category. If these types of stocks start uh, churning around, develop a new balanced area, a new, new fair auction. Um, you want to look at these as, as a buy support situation. Yeah, peak D. I think this is kind of like a take some off the table and let it. Let's see what let's see what's going to happen a little bit later with COG. <laughs> um, SWN. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, again, this has been kind of the darling of the uh, El Cheapo stock world, but actually had. Had really shown itself, shown its hand early. The scanner kind of showed that as something that didn't want to go down with the price of crude oil or the market. Um, got a couple more here. EQT Corp. This is one I've been keeping an eye on. Um, this is our daily. This is our weekly. Remember these. You know, we were trying to you know higher lows, getting above profiles on our on our daily. Finally broke above the weekly. You got big support here at fifty five eighty two on EQT. So we might have to wait a little bit, see if that thing can pull back and, and uh, kind of play the breakout former resistance, now support kind of game on these. These are kind of a sit tight. Let's just see what the market and the uh, oil sector is going to do in general. Here's Apache. Um, here's our daily on Apache. We kind of really, really lurch forward with this, but let's, let's take a look at our long-term weekly. We've got some resistance here. This is one that made lower lows as crude oil was making lower lows, so I'm not exactly as interested in in, in buying this uh, yet. 
because this this didn't show the anomaly that I was looking for really as oil was going down. I'm gonna just gonna pick out a couple more here that that uh, had some kind of attractive tones to it. Let's take a look at HP. Let's just look at the chart. We're sitting. This is our weekly. This one obviously had made lower lows of crude oil and uh, then then bounced. But you know, right now we're just basically coming up into the bottom of our profile on our weekly. We need to see this thing. Here's our here's the numbers on HP. 46.56 and 47.60. So we want to see a, a you know, we want to see we want to start seeing some closes above that DMZ on HP. Um, again, it's probably not the most attractive, the most relatively strong stock in this particular sector. Um, let's take a look at there was one I wanted to look at here, Halliburton. Um, this was one that we kind of picked out on a on a sort, and I'll I'll show you where that came from. I wanted to see stocks that are trading below weekly, starting to put in new demand areas, and starting to kind of lurch above on the two forties. So there's one stock that kind of had that turnaround tone to it. Here's our, here's our, uh, and we're going to have a new demand area today in Halliburton, by the way. This is our weekly, not the most attractive situation in the world, but showing some hints that we might put, be putting in a new base area. And also now that you've broken stride on the 240s, you do have a chance to, to try to pick a battle on this around 29.18. But remember, crude oil could turn around. These things could kind of languish a little bit. We're going to have to kind of keep our eye on crude oil. This is, this is definitely broken stride. But um, in my opinion, you've got, you've got a couple of better picks out there than this one. Let's, let's go back and resort this. Um, and I'm going to go back to our dashboard here on our S&Ps. I'm going to look at Apple really quick. You know, this is one I, I wouldn't get super excited about this, guys. And let's see where we're at today. Yeah, we got some prints going off. All right. I wouldn't get super excited about Apple. And we had a, a really good rally, but all we did was rally back into some some areas of resistance. And we haven't gotten there quite yet. Um, here's here's the first area of resistance on Apple at around 101.34. But remember, you've got some serious headwinds up until 104.29. So, the 104.29 is going to be the big number on Apple to really pay attention to, to short again. Um, but you've got some opportunities right now to lean against on the short side around 101.34. Remember, um, you know, this 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 stock has had some fundamental news out that's not that good. And we want to just kind of take it that for what it's worth, considering the technical breakdowns that have already happened on Apple. Remember, it's change the tone and, and act accordingly. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software.
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming back here. Uh, we're taking a look at the Ruble USD cross on the Forex right now. Um, I, I, you know, this is a couple of things I want to say here. We had a really good uh, daily. Let me let me just. God, eh. OK, so here's our Ruble down here. If you can see that we had a kind of new new profile attempt to appear that yellow peel back on Friday. And then lo and behold, we had the new box and we actually used that as support here. So that 7677 down below, if you see that used to a tick, this is a good principle or a good, uh, a good example, excuse me, of, of, of kind of, you know, stocks in an uptrend, take some weight off. We've got some new support, new bottom of our profile here. We actually hit that to the tick pretty much. And uh, again, now a new balanced area for the ruble. But we don't have any new hints of uh, 35 weeks above the latest profile. It's kind of amazing. What is that? 35 divided by four? I can't do math very well. What is that? 10 months we've been trading above profiles here and, and on the ruble. So not a lot of new ideas about a major turnaround here but we've had some really good trading opportunities and abilities to to uh to to find some 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 areas to to buy support again already on this so we've had a bounce let me i can't give prices on this particular scanner because we've been we would be skirting uh exchange rules i want to i got to go to a different server to show you the price on the ruble but we've had a really good bounce today in this already and that was uh kind of a wait and see just like we we're talking about on crude and a couple other products, for the market to come to you. And those inflection points are super, super powerful. Well, let me see here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the Canadian dollar. We're on some currencies here. Here's the, uh, here's the Canadian situation. All right, so we finally had that this is our weekly. We finally had that. Uh, let me go to our Canadian dollar here. Here's the uh, profiles here. So we finally had, um, and, and another great example, we had a new profile attempt to appear. Then we have new support areas to pay attention to, and we should be out of this trade waiting for the, for those numbers. 141.27. We talked about 141.27 last week. We've gotten there, as you can see, and guess what's happened? We've started to bounce off of it. So not a big fan of going short this product, Here's our weekly. Here's our daily. We talked about we're going to have to wait until we get down into 141.27, and lo and behold, we've hit it to the tick, and we're bouncing. This is a great example of how to be patient with these particular profiles and wait until the market comes to you. If it doesn't happen, guess what? You lose zero. Is that the symbol for zero? I mean, look at this. Really makes me proud. All righty. Where, where the chart went black. Let's see here. Did you guys see that chart? I hope you did. The, the guys at uh, TFNN are saying that that chart went black. Here's a Canadian USD cross. You guys are seeing this chart, right? In the den? Just making sure. Got 
got it. Okay. So that was a good example with that 141.27 just to just to recap that as a just to wait patiently until the market comes to you. And that's the hardest thing to do sometimes when you're a trader, especially when you're sitting in front of these screens watching the lights flash all day long. It's it's just to kind of be patient. Go do something else. Put your orders in. Put the stops in. You can put a lot of OCO killer orders in these days on some of these platforms. It's quite amazing what what uh, the transactional platforms now have that they 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 haven't had in the past. Okay, a couple other things I want to look at. Let's take a look at Johnson and Johnson. I want to go in here and, and uh, just pull up J and J. Pull it up on the scanner. This is something you know. We talked last week about it. Stocks really clarify themselves when the market pulls back significantly, like to to just whole standard deviation or two standard deviation moves away from the mean. And you want to find stocks in those situations that are just raising their hands saying, hey, I want to be bought. The scanner actually puts those, in my opinion, on your radar screen very easily. But when we bounce significantly off of those lows, we also get a chance to figure out, you know, what what doesn't want to bounce with the market. I think we rallied, what, Thursday and Friday? Did we rally 500 Dow points. We had a pretty pretty decent move. Somebody, maybe somebody can uh, can tell me how much we actually did move Thursday and Friday. But Johnson and Johnson, I mean, you know, this is the level of the market on Johnson and Johnson. Here's our profiles on a multi time frame basis, and I want to pull up the chart on this. This is our weekly. This is our daily. This is our four hour. Um, you know, we're not exactly in uh, doing our happy dance, if you will, on Johnson & Johnson. So what I want to do here is on our weekly, you know, we basically you're looking at this, in my opinion now, 97.45, a little bit of resistance area to look at on Johnson & Johnson stops above. Maybe able to get a little bit of a pullback on this for a trading opportunity on Johnson & Johnson. So, again, what I want to do is, is I want to look at a sort here. I just want to look at below 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 this this is real simple nothing sophisticated we've got quite a few stocks that are still just not wanting to get out of their own way on a bounce like we had thursday and friday 687 dow points off the bottom steve rhodes is pointing out in the futures contract okay so that's that's a pretty big move and stocks that really didn't want to bounce are the ones that you're able to really easily quantify as these are the weak stocks, and if, if you're thinking, which I'm thinking the market's going to have a little bit of an issue here in 1909, 1918, those two inflection points that we talked about earlier for the S&Ps, you got International Paper, you got General Electric, you got you know quite a few stocks here, uh, Morgan Stanley, some banking stocks here, Northern Trust Corp, Travelers. Uh, a lot of these stocks just have not really gotten out of their own way in the 687 Dow point move that Steve Rose just pointed out. So I'm just going to – let's see. I'm going to look at uh, – let's see here. People's United Financial. Let me just take a look at this one. Here's our multi-time frame inflection point. Looks weekly, daily, 24060. Uh, I'm going to look at the chart really quick. Ouch. My goodness. Whew. All right, so man, that is that's like off that's uh, off the charts as they say, fourteen twenty five and fourteen forty eight. So you got a big resistance area fourteen forty five fourteen forty eight fourteen twenty five. Any rallies up into there, we're going to be able to use that as resistance and, and orient stops around. Now, um, on the contrary. We can go into the scanner. God, we always run out of time. We got 20 seconds before break. I'll tell you what, when we come back from break, we're going to take a look at some stocks that had that were showing strength before we had this 687 Dow move up and actually followed through. I want to show you how that works on the other side of the coin and uh, some stocks that, that uh, showed some serious relative strength that actually followed through. Remember, when we put on trades, we want to try to find trades that are going to be as least painful as possible when we're wrong. So we're going to take a look at some of these.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And uh, somebody had mentioned looking at uh, Five Below, F-I-V-E. Uh, in the den, and if I miss things in the den, just kind of repopulate the den. The uh, the years of uh, abuse are taking their toll, and I uh, forget things very very easily. So just put them back in the den. Five below. Here we go. So again, we talked about trying to find some stocks that really were hanging in there before this bounce when the market was just going to hell in a handbasket. Five below actually was one of those stocks, and the scanner, you know, basically put it on the radar screen. So Here's the uh, the chart on it, and I'm gonna. This is our daily. This is our weekly. We've been you know trading below profiles recently, and uh, as soon as the market started rallying again, we found support. This was kind of the lows of the market the, the, the other day, 32.31. I'm gonna show this on eSignal really quick, and uh, here's remember they have better charts than we do, but uh, here's the uh, the big time support on this 32.31, and you know you get a what is this a uh, two and a half, three, almost, let's see, 13, yeah, $2 bounce in this thing, $30 stock. So, you know, it's like an 8% move. Again, doing the relative strength trading game and being able to use the scanner. I mean, basically, let me do this really quick. If I come in here and I just want to see stocks in a real quick, easy way that, that we're trading above profiles, I can sort these things. Um, be able to find out which ones have really been in an uptrend and, and you know, had kind of neglected 
to follow suit on the way down. Um, there's that SWN trade right there. Uh, here's uh, AT&T. This is one I really, really was, was happy to see. Uh, this is our daily. This is our weekly. This is one that was kind of using this, again, already on the radar screen as a stock that didn't want to go down. And then, lo and behold, we find that big support top of the profile, 33.44. And uh, where are we at right now on this? Wow. We reached 35. When do you get a a two-point move all of a sudden in AT&T? I mean, these are the types of really cool trading opportunities. There's that weekly. There's the daily. Again, not wanting to go below profiles in the middle of all that you know, catastrophe in the S&P. So, again, same principle. You can find them really quick, and you can look at the numbers and try to, you know, uh, you know, understand which ones are just Constellation brands sitting down here, first day above. Uh, one of the things I like to do, too, is just I like to go in here and kind of clear the deck. I like to look at things that are sitting on inflection points. So uh, if I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look at top, top, Bristol-Myers Squibb, let's take a look at that one. Again, you know, not the weakest stock in the world, but, you know, kind of close below, coming back up into some inflection points here. May have some trading opportunities around this 64.37. If the market kind of relaxes a little bit here, we may have some opportunities on that one. But uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at these, and especially the S&P 500, and find things that are sitting around these inflection points. But, again, I'm, you know, very partial to uh, – let me just reset our sorting here. Very partial to finding, or was very partial as you've been watching the show, to find strong stocks in a weak market and then be able to kind of look how those pan out. And they really pan out great, i.e. that AT&T trade, the FIV trade. Those are stocks that were just, again, trading above profiles. You don't under, you know, know this information unless you've got this scanner to be able to point these out for you. I'm not saying this is the... Uh, answer to the world's problems but it does help <laughs> guys stay stay tuned larry's going to be next steve rhodes obviously just uh incredible to watch him um you got basil daryl mark david white andy heck tom o'brien of course and uh, some of the other hosts on tfn the uh options hour that uh think or swim does stay tuned you'll be more the wiser we'll be back tomorrow guys Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.